everybody. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my kitchen here at Little Spoon Farm. Today we are going to make a very basic beginner sourdough bread recipe. So if you have tried baking sourdough in the past and failed or given up and you want to give this a try again, then this recipe is perfect for you because I've cut down some of the steps and just made it really easy for you to put this dough together and this will give you a chance to get a, a feel for the dough and kind of learn the process before you start using more advanced techniques. So this dough is, or this recipe is going to produce a small crumb. It's not going to be an open, large crumb. It's kind of a, um, it's a 70% hydration dough. So you'll be able to use this bread for sandwiches and toast and dip in soups and things like that. So if you want to learn how to bake sourdough, this is gonna be a recipe that you'll wanna check out. So why don't we go ahead and get started. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is feed your starter so that it's active and bubbly once you go to mix your dough. You will want to feed it about 12 hours prior to mixing your dough. So if you're going to put your dough together at night, then you would want to feed your starter earlier that morning so that it's ready. So once you're ready to mix your dough together, you're going to want to put 350 grams of water into a bowl and add uh, 50 grams of your starter to the water and stir it up really good to distribute the starter and water together. Then you're going to add 10 grams of salt and give that a good stir. And then you will add 500 grams of bread flour. Now you want to use a nice high quality bread flour. I use King Author bread flour that has a, a high protein content in it. So give these uh, ingredients a nice stir with the spatula or the whatever you're using to mix the ingredients with, and then use your hands to incorporate everything, making sure that all the flour has been, um, you know, mixed with the water and there's no dry bits. Once you have this kind of shaggy mass all put together, you're going to cover the bowl and you're gonna let it rest on your countertop for one hour. This is gonna give a chance for the, the flour to absorb the water and then the gluten can start to develop. Normally, this is called the auto lease stage and you would not normally add the salt at this point, but because this is a beginner's recipe, we're just putting everything into the bowl so that it's just a few steps before you let it ferment for the night. So after that hour is up, you're going to do the first set of stretch and folds. So you will pick up the dough on one side while it's still in the bowl, pull it up and stretch it over itself. And you'll do this about four times, turning the bowl and picking up a different side each time. Cover the bowl and let it rest for 30 minutes. Now I would advise you to do at least two sets, but I recommend three. Once you have those three sets done, cover the bowl and let it ferment overnight. So normally with this amount of starter in the dough, I will let my bread, uh, dough ferment from the time that I first mix it together until the time that I shape it about 10 hours. So if I mixed, started mixing my bow at, dough at eight o'clock at night, then at six o'clock in the morning is when I'm going to shape it and let it sit for the second rise. So in the morning, once your dough has been fermenting overnight and it's ready to go, it's gonna be about 50% bigger in size and it's gonna have bubbles um, all around the edges. And once it's ready, you can go ahead and do the final shape. Now, to do that final shape, you're gonna take the dough and you're gonna turn it out onto a very lightly floured surface. And 
And you can see how I'm taking the dough at one end and I'm pulling it up and over itself and I'm repeating that with the sides and then the piece farthest away from me, I pull it up into myself. Then I flip that dough over and I gently cup the dough and pull it towards me and kind of twisting and turning it and pulling it again to create that tight skin on the outside of the dough. Now, at this point, you put this uh, ball of dough onto a piece of parchment paper and then you use the parchment paper as a sling to put it into a bowl. And this is where we're gonna do the second rise. So you're gonna let that rise covered for about 30 minutes. And then you're gonna preheat your oven with your Dutch oven inside of the oven to 450 degrees. So after that's been preheating for another 30 minutes, your dough should be ready to go ahead and bake. So at that point, take your Dutch oven out of your oven and remove the cover. Use a razor to score the top of the dough and then use the parchment paper as a sling again to lift the dough up and place it into the Dutch oven. Go ahead and cover that and put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes is up, remove the cover and you're gonna bake this for about 25 to 30 more minutes, depending on how brown you want that crust. So once it's finished baking, the inside temperature of this dough or bread should be about 210 degrees. If you have a thermometer, you can check that. But you just take it out, remove the bread and place it onto a cooling rack and let it cool completely before you actually slice into it. If you slice into it too soon, the crumb will get very gummy and sticky and gooey. So you wanna let that totally cool down before you slice it. So that's pretty much it. That's how you make sourdough bread. Um, like I said, I've left out some of the more advanced techniques with uh, you know the Autolys and the uh, Banatons that we use to prove our bread in overnight. I will definitely get another video for a more advanced bread recipe later, but for right now I'm starting out our new website with all beginner recipes for sourdough and I think that this is just a really good way for you to start you know baking sourdough bread and getting a good feel for how things work. So if you have any questions or comments leave them below. You can go to my website and I will have a printable recipe that you can just print out or save to your phone. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.